So let's get started with some UI stuff. This is my UI. This is how I play the game and you're looking through the eyes of Mage Manda. But let's take a deeper look. Let's go into edit mode. And a whole lot more is going on here. So we're going to just take this top to bottom so it's not too confusing. This is my mini map and talking head. My loot is statically placed here. Focus. Target. Don't worry about these. These are for later. We'll get into these. And this is my quest log. And then on the bottom, this is my vehicle. It's my Lee vehicle. My little paper cutout of when you need to repair. Me. My buddies. My buffs. My debuffs. The cast bar and my chat is right here. I put the stuff I never use way over in the side. I'm undead, so I'll never need a breathing bar. Well, let's, let's hope. And then the HUD, HUD tooltip is here. So if we press P, it brings up all of your action bars. And you'll notice that this action bar here is hidden and why it's hidden is because of the spells that are on this bar none of these spells have a cooldown that I'm worried about so I don't need to see them I know every time I press 1 I'm gonna hit blast 2 barrage etc now down here are some shift keys that I've put into keybinds, and we'll get more into depth that in that later. But this is my racial will of the forsaken, and I've never been in a situation where I had to worry about needing it more than once every two minutes. The spell steal, it's spammable. This is eat my mana bun, spammable, and this is my mount, which is also spammable. But if you were observant, you would notice that another action bar went missing. And it's this one. These are things that I'm also not very concerned with on cooldowns. Remove Curse has an 8 second cooldown, but I can kind of gauge 8 seconds, so I'm not worried about that. Cone of Cold is a last ditch effort defensive, so I probably won't last the 12 second cooldown. I'm probably going to die. <laughs> uh, this is Polymark. It's a macro for marking and sheeping at the same time and announcing it in party and we'll go into that that's in the macro section this is my repair mount and slow fall and I've got this key to map so when I press it I just pop up my map there and then your basic portals because I'm required to put this portal out at the end of every dungeon and then Arcane Intellect and Conjure Food. So those are spells I'm not too terribly concerned about. What I'm really concerned about is everything right here in the middle. And it has to do with priority of what's most important to me. Well, Orb I use a lot of. I'm going to be glancing down there a lot. Shifting Power, it's part of our rotation. Defensive, Defensive, gotta know those. Can I Interrupt? and my big damage dealer. Another defensive, another defensive, another defensive, and yet another defensive, and then two more crowd control slash defensives. So it's it's very defensive heavy here. And then these are kind of more like cooldown things. This is icy flows so that I can click it easily and just move around and do whatever I want. And alter time and blink are where my thumb sit and we'll get into that when we do the keybinds. I got a trinket close at hand and a stun and I also have 
uh, an eject button to carry passengers. So whenever I get on my mount, I've got my two guys. And it's Cousin Slow Hands and Mystic Bird Bat. But when I press eject, their seats become available for someone else to sit on. So it's kind of helpful to, to do that like in Dawn of the Infinite or if someone's unfamiliar with the dungeon. It's nice to have this and this is a macro we'll get into when we do that. But that's the basics of how I've got my UI set up. And you'll, you might notice that I don't have a mini map. It's because I have that key bound. I don't like a lot of stuff on my screen, so I like to keep it kind of clean. And then I keep my quest objectives minimized too. Um, as for the other miscellaneous stuff, I have my bags compiled from the one bag. And that's about it. Now as for key binding, it's a very personal thing. So you key bind to your heart's content. But if you have a gaming mouse, much like this one here, if you've got something like that, then this next section is how to set up these key binds from your mouse into WoW. So when you first get the mouse, it's going to install some software. And for mine, it's a Synapse. And what we want to do is we want to create a key bind here that will reflect into WoW's key binds. So let's go through this step by step. On the Synapse app, go to Mouse and then Customize. You create your profile and there are other types of mice so you're gonna want this one if you have the 12 button guy and then you just simply click on the button so we're we've got button one selected which is this one here and you're gonna go to keyboard function a key recording and what I did is I put in control F1 I try to put in something I would never hit on accident you don't want to put this in as like in or you because those might unbind something so we've got this set up here now let's head back in game and see what needs to be done on that end well now we're back in the game so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how our keybinds are going to fit so imagine the mouse in your head and it has buttons one two three all the way down to 10, 11, 12. This is a representation of what your mouse is doing, okay? So this is button 5 and you just click it, right? And this is button 2, you just click it. That's where my thumb rests, like the bottom of my thumb is here and like the top of it's up here. So I know if I move my thumb all the way down to the edge, well I've got 10 and I've got 12. And with these, I can interpolate what everything is. Like this is to the right of 5, like in your brain. That way you're not remembering all these numbers. I don't remember the numbers. I just know where my thumb is all the time. So it's always defaulted kind of to here. So we've created some keybinds with like a control F1. So that would be this one here. So when I press control F1, I get my guy. So let's bind it so that WoW knows what control F1 is supposed to stand for. Control F1 is supposed to stand for what? Well, we've got action bar 8, right? Action bar 8. So we're going to go on our keybinds. And we're going to look for action bar 8. Well, here's action bar 8. And what you're going to do for every button you're going to keybind the number to it. Okay. So for this, action bar 8, button 1 is control F10. And I just put them all in. 
Okay. So once you've done that, then once you click a button, like I'm going to click this button up here on my mouse, it knows that action bar 8 button 2 or whatever is control F2. And that correlates with what you just did with Razor Synapse. So everything jives now. Everything works together. So these are just click ones, right? But you can also set up shift click ones. So let's take a look at our hidden one again. Our hidden one is action bar three. So we're gonna go into keybinds and we're gonna find action bar three. Right there. And I've done the same thing. I just keybind them in, but this time instead of control whatever, I did control shift and then F whatever. You'll notice this one isn't bound. That's that's the button that's my map that we saw earlier. So once you've got that all set up, then you can just drag and drop whatever you want there. But but think of it like two layers. You can do it in two layers. This is the first layer, you know, where you're just clicking the buttons normally. But then this, and this hidden one down here, are the ones where whenever you press shift and click, it does that thing. I would highly recommend just memorizing what these are, the shift click ones, and assigning spells that aren't very common, like Arcane Intellect and, and Portal and Conjure Food and that kind of thing. Um, it's all perf personal preference, but uh, that, that definitely works for me. Next up, we're going to look at our macros. So to get to your macros, we're just going to click Macros. And I have some already set up here. This is the eject whenever we were on our yakety yak. <coughs> and then we press eject. It kicks our boys out. So the macro is basically saying show the tooltip for the yak. Or if you don't have the yak, you can just show the tooltip for your mammoth or whatever repair mount you're using. And then this one is just running a script that says eject this passenger and eject the other passenger so pretty simple stuff all this is going to be in the description this macro is just a it's an icon it just looks like a map I thought it was fun and this is polymark where you cast polymorph it puts a moon over their head and I've got it saying in party chat mine moon <laughs> This macro is saying that it's going to use a targeting macro and it's going to assign five. And five is your uh, icon here. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So if you wanted to mark it as X, you would do like seven. That's how that's counted. That's what that number means. And then it says, in party chat, say mine, and the brackets are how you make these, right? So you're going to be saying one of these shapes in chat. So it'll say mine, moon. And then this is just saying, hey, cast polymorph on it if it is exist and not dead and not my buddy. That's what exist, no dead, and harm mean. So this is an example of how the polymark macro works. We've got this guy targeted here, and we want to kill him. But we also have to crowd control this guy. So we're going to sheep him by mousing over and pressing our button. And it sheeped him. Well, it pigged him, actually. And then it, it gave him a moon. And then here, down here in chat, it says, mine. And it's got the little moon. Up next is my personal one. It's Res. And it's my gnomish army knife. I'm, a en I'm an engineer, so every now and then one lucky soul will be Res by yours truly. And what this does is it shows the cooldown for it, right? I've got the icon different because I wanted to be kind of like a priest. 
but it shows the cooldown and tooltip for the knife. And then it says use or cast the knife. And then in chat say I'm attempting to res percent T. And that's just how you say their name, whoever it is. You just percent T and it'll put their name in there. Uh, this is just a, an icon with the guy talking or yelling or gritting his teeth or something. And that's my push to talk button. My push to talk is F12. So if you run Discord or something like that and you have a push to talk, I there's no abilities attached to this. So that way I don't accidentally like fly off my mount or something like that. And this finally is time warp and this is one of my favorite ones. What it is, it's, a, it's this guy right here. Okay. It says show time warp, so it's showing showing the the uh, the tool tip for it like the cooldown and then it casts time warp okay and then it's it opens up stopwatch for a timer of nine minutes and 57 seconds and then it starts the stopwatch it plays it and then in party chat I inform everyone the time warp has been used so what that looks like is something like this so I'll click it this is the only button I click by the way everything else is macroed I, I I don't trust myself enough to macro this so I'll click it and look there the the stopwatch started right and what the stopwatch is gonna do is it's gonna go off it's gonna ding an audible ding for like three seconds before I can use time warp again sometimes when you get going you lose track of what you're doing and it's nice to have a nice little audio hey remember time warp so hopefully that has helped